quick note as uh, Coach David Patrick joins us here. Uh, the Broncos will send a first round pick in 2023 and an early pick next year to the New Orleans Saints mm. in exchange for their new head coach, Sean Payton. Mm. Sean Damn. Payton has been. Yeah, exactly. Sean Payton <laughs> has been tasked with fixing uh, the Denver Broncos. What do you think Coach Patrick will go for on the open market? Oh, man, let's not even let's not even. Tell the, the, the people what it is, man, because now they're going to start uh, sending inquiries and stuff. And he's no trade. He's off limits. That's a Rudy Gobert size <laughs> trade right there that you did. Coach, Coach Patrick, uh, kind enough to join us. Look, Coach, we can talk about whatever you want to. We don't got to talk about basketball. We don't. We, we can talk about how Sac stay. We can talk about Adidas. We can talk about whatever makes you happy, man. <laughs> well, I just got sad news that my man, you know, I'm a Saints fan, man. So we kind of. We're gonna miss well, him. that's a, that's all right. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, uh, Sean Payton clearly he 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 wasn't going back there. You guys have moved. You no got doubt. you got some draft yeah, picks yeah. Uh, back in and and Denver was desperate. They needed a big hire to come in and 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 fix Russell Wilson. And mm. you know Sean Payton is the perfect guy to do it. He's a hell of a coach. Yeah, yeah. It'd be good to see him back out there on the sideline. Hopefully, we can get some help down there in in, in Saint territory. Not too much help, coach. Not too much help. My Niners need to get back to the Super Bowl and win one. So, you know, it's take the take the slow approach if you're the Saints. Take the slow approach. Okay. Got it. Got it, man. I know Sunday was a rough day for the for the I was a 49er fan though, Sunday. But I but I that was tough, but, that was tough man. You know, but I I flipped I, on I, the I, I, I'm gonna to say I'm Hurts the Super Bowl. You did who you did? I, I'm happy to see Jalen Hurts in the Super Bowl. I like him. I've liked him since Alabama, man, his whole story. So that that'll be good to see. That'll be good to see. No, ditto, ditto. Coming from Oklahoma, seeing what he did at Oklahoma. Um, Were you I there was when he was at Oklahoma? No, he had just left when I when I when I got there. But but he claims OU now, you know. So so we'll, 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 we'll take him, you know. That's but right. I was going for the 49ers all the way to about four minutes left, and I flipped. I put my OU. <laughs> <step> on. <laughs> oh, I put my OU stuff on uh, bang bang Niner gang then. Fly Eagles, fly! Yeah, yeah, yeah. fly, Eagles, fly. <laughs> uh, who, okay, who are you going for uh, in, in the Super Bowl then? I'm going for the Eagles. I'm, I'm going for the Eagles in the, in, in the, in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I got you. I, got I feel you. like the Super Bowl is a, actually an easy way to transition to something that's going on at Sac State. Y'all got Black Excellence Day going on on Saturday mm. and and obviously Black History Month kicks off tomorrow. It's always a February is always an interesting time, especially post 2020. Um, you know, businesses mm -hmm. have their way of 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 going about things and it's always great, you know, to 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 celebrate. Um can you tell us about Black Excellence Day and what you guys are doing on Saturday? Yeah, we just want to first of all we're going to wear black black jerseys in that game and our coaching staffs will be dressed in black but uh, we want to, you know, celebrate equality and inclusion in that game on uh, on Saturday. Not only for uh, for all races to come together, but also all genders uh, to come together and make and make note of it. And obviously, for me, uh, being someone of color uh, that's leading this program, I don't take that lightly, and uh, want to do everything I can to put that platform in place so there is equality in, in this world. Because as we see what's going on. You know, and all these shocking stuff that's happened on the news, we, we got a long way to go when it comes to the equality and us being treated the right way. Yeah, kudos to Sac State for, um, yeah. you know, for doing this, for 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 having this uh, type of awareness, having this type of uh, event coinciding with the with the with the basketball program, man. So, um, and and great to see uh, you here as well, Coach David Patrick, and, and and pushing it as well, man. I mean, when you talk about uh, something like Black Excellence Day and, and then having your guys at the uh, MLK March on, on that Monday. I mean, these are things that um, getting out into the community, uh, ingratiating, you know, Sac State Athletics and the, and the basketball programs with the community is something that uh, that goes a long way, you know, just not only for, you know, wins and losses, but knowing that you're representing the community uh, the way you guys are, man. Uh, big ups to you guys for sure. No, I appreciate it, man. And I tell these guys all the time, you're not going to remember if you won or lost at Eastern Washington, but you remember, I don't care how, how old you get, that you were able to go walk in that market, march in Sacramento. Um, and for me, that's the biggest impact I can have, and, you know, uh, on these young kids, you know, because it's very easy not to show up. But when you show up, that's something that you remember and, and, and why I'm the position I'm in. 
And I appreciate that line of thinking, Coach. But given the way Eastern Washington is playing, I think they're going to remember if they win. (laughs) (laughs) Eastern Washington is playing some good ball. What are you guys doing to get ready for that? Praying. But (laughs) (laughs) no, no. no. look, we we, we went up there and and, and played a tough game up there, man. We were down 25 at their place and tied the game up, and they beat us in the last second shot. Uh, but they're the best team in the league. They're undefeated. Uh, I think they've run 12 or 13 in a row, even starting before non-conference. Um, I think they have a pro and in, inventors on the wing uh, who's tough to deal with. Um, mm. But they're, they're a formidable opponent for us. But somebody had, I think, at the nest, if we have our fans and we play the way we're capable of playing, uh, we could possibly uh, get after on Thursday night. Coach, what, so we talk about the Eastern Washington game. You guys were down early in that game. The Eastern Washington just blitzed you guys from beyond the arc. That was crazy to see how many they hit to start the game. Um, you talk about the Montana State game. You're down at the half there. What are those conversations like, you know, trying to get through to these guys, you know, to say, hey, we got to get off to faster starts? Or is it something where the whole coaching staff is, you know, kind of scratching their head and trying to come together with how do we get these guys to – not fall behind because once they get rolling, I mean, they play great basketball, but getting out to faster starts, what, what's the possible solution for that? Look, I think the tone Saturday night was a little tougher than it had been because we, because we've proved that we can play with every, everybody in the league. I think anybody would tell you that this watch is play for small increments of time or, or, or we've been able to compete or be better than anybody in the league. So part of it's on me getting the lineup right, um, which, which I have, I've made a, I've made an adjustment there. And then a lot of it just keeps showing in film and having a belief and not being satisfied that, you know, on Thursday night we beat Montana by 15 or 17 points is a great team. You can't be satisfied with that. You got to go ahead and, and, and come in with a bigger chip on your shoulder on Saturday night against Montana State. And we're still not there yet. I think handling success is part of a process and, and understanding what it feels like to win and what it feels like to be hunted as opposed to hunting. Like all those are, are things that you have to go through in the process. So I'm hopeful uh, that, that that setback this past Saturday night against Montana State gets us ready uh, for Eastern Washington this Thursday. And coach, we, we, we talk about stuff like that a lot with, uh, you know, Mike Brown and the Kings learning to win. And, and, and I, I one thing it, it appears, you know, Mike has the ability to do, and, and it's gotta be really difficult for a coach and ask how you handle this is, you want to challenge your guys, right? Especially coming off games like you had this week and you want to challenge them, but you still want to find ways to encourage them, right? Like they're doing things well, they're doing things that you want them to do, but you got to challenge them to be better. Like, how do you, how do you walk that line, especially as a first year head coach with this group? Look, I show them via film, you know, and I just talk about the great teams and the great organizations that consistent of what they do over, over long periods of time. And so consistency, every possession, every minute, every game, um, how you approach practice on Monday has got to be the same the way you approach it Wednesday the night before the game. And um, my guess is Mike's dealing with a lot of those same those same deals. You know, you you, you win a game and they get satisfied. You, you can't be satisfied. You got to keep keep working, keep chipping, because um, that target gets bigger and bigger on your back the more the more wins you get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, I'm a, I'm gonna check in with you, Coach Man, because uh, we're getting into February and it's the final month of the regular season, man, and I know it seemed like it probably feels to you like you just signed here like two weeks ago, and now we're already in February, man. You know, going into the final month, hopefully the final two months, because we we playing in March. We playing in March. I'm gonna say it right now. We playing in March. Uh, the 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 back end of the of the season. Um, how's it going for you, man? How's how's this first first season, and you know before the season started and everything getting everything going? How's that been going for you, man? It's been awesome. Probably been more than I thought. You know, coming here to, to to Sacramento, I never thought I'd be on ESPN 1320 with guys like yourself. When I took the job, and I and I really mean that. I didn't know what 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 people thought of Sac State. You know, before coming here, uh, so the community's been awesome. You know, and then the team itself, I think, has made a bigger jump than I would have thought. Usually, year one, you're trying to get six to ten wins, but we've surpassed that. You know, and and the buy-in from the guys and the administration and the and the city has been has been has been really good, and so um, hopefully this thing keeps rolling, you know, and, and and we can get a couple more games and and get some great momentum going into going into our conference tournament at the end of February. Most people don't think they'll be on with guys like us, so that's that's that's, that's perfect. <laughs> 
and and while you know you're 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 obviously focused on your team's success, you deserve a lot of credit uh, as the individual accolades continue to come in for you with uh, your twelfth win, the most uh, wins by a first year head coach in Sac State history, mm-hmm. Division One history. So, uh, congratulations to you, Coach Man. We're 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 incredibly proud of you. We're 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 thrilled to have you on every, every week, and we're really excited to see where this program is going. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate that. You know, no, no head coach can do it without a great staff, and, and, and I mean that. That's not lip service so much. I got a great staff that's that's bought in and, and has the same fundamental beliefs that I have. So that helps. You know, when you're trying to trying to change a program, yeah, let's go get Eastern Washington, man. Uh, we, it's we a all green out. Man. It's a green out. First 250 people get uh, uh, green shirts. It's a green out on Thursday. Let's go, man. Come on, Please, man. man. The Ness is going to be some of that green. Yeah, man, that's going to be rocking. Let's get Eastern Washington. We owe them a little something. I need some get back, Coach. Let's get it. Let's get it. Well, I'll be on here smiling real big next Tuesday. We, we get Eastern <laughs> Washington, bro. <laughs> Go get them, Coach. We appreciate you as always. Thank you, my man. Thank you, guys.